All right, guys, sure. no worries. We're doing good, man. How are you guys doing? We're doing great. I'm All right, we're in yes. Austin, Texas, right now. The tour started. I'm about to get my knuckles tattooed. Shut up. Good <laughs> because we have a we have a question about that. So bank that one. Um, okay. Austin, Texas. Are you guys are you guys not playing? Obviously, are you playing tonight? We no. played two nights ago, and tomorrow we play Dallas. All right, you guys are just like hanging out. Okay. Yeah, cool. we had a we had a New Orleans show that got canceled, so now we're here for the next well today and tomorrow. We leave tomorrow tomorrow's morning. Morning. Tomorrow's Dallas, and so yeah, a little little day off in Texas. Okay, shit. All right, so uh, today we're joined by uh, Coley Beepus and Bardo from Beauty School Dropout, whose new album Ready to Eat Indeed. is now streaming everywhere, and their uh, U.S. headlining tour is happening right this instant uh, with support from Not a Toy and Ava Maybe and. It continues through to December 9th. So as you're hearing this, that will still be happening whenever. Yes, sir. Let's go. Uh, how are the vibes in Austin, Texas? They're good. We love Austin. It's like the oasis of Texas. <laughs> in what capacity? <laughs> it's it's like not it's not Texas. Yeah, not yeah. It's oh, like right. Texas okay. is like the red state and Austin's just the blue dot. Yeah. <laughs> it's just cool it's like a bunch of hipsters it feels like portland in texas i don't know yeah okay sick. so you're saying like if i book a trip to texas like go to austin like that's the spot yeah, 100%. Definitely the only place worth booking a trip to in texas i would say <laughs> jesus all right i'll get that in mind <laughs> where are you guys based uh we're out of uh connecticut and massachusetts so new england boys hey, right on we'll see you up at mass yes sir uh yes you will absolutely hell yeah can't wait. i was dming y'all i was like come to the show and you're like we're already taken care of i was like perfect yeah. <laughs> perfect i love that yeah that kind of worked itself out though i do appreciate it thank you <laughs> yeah of course which also uh before we even get into it thank you for the review on ready to eat and just like everything that we're doing in general we sat in the bus the other night and just like lost our minds over how cool you guys were to us yeah so, we were cheesing so you. hard we were like damn we feel like we're the best band on earth right now <laughs> <laughs> listen i mean it was a good album yeah not thank blowing you. smoke that album's fucking good thank you hey, thank you yeah. it's, it's weird it's always weird hearing it from a third party because like we've never like met y'all like and it's like it's weird to like you know get that recognition it's still trippy to me <laughs> like, it's how you know it's like, honest damn. right yeah, it's like, it, well, because we live in this day and age of just you see numbers for everything, but that doesn't really mean anything. You could say, oh, 500,000 people listen to a song, whatever. But then it's like you hear from one person says this song is my favorite song of this year. I'm like, oh, well, <laughs> that's crazy. You know, even if one person listens to it, that's like hearing that is pretty remarkable. I feel like I, uh, when I was reading up on you guys and kind of, you know, trying to formulate some questions, I saw a lot of um, just general excitement to meet fans. Is part of that just sort of like being able to hear from them in general, just how they feel about the band? Like, is it just a lot of positive feedback back and forth? Like, obviously, they're excited to meet you. You're excited to meet them. Yeah, I think there's definitely that aspect. I think it's also just it's fun to have that experience. And it's fun. Our art becomes really fun when we can see it reflecting positively on others. And I think that they are the driving force for us. And whatever each band's driving force to do music is, like, obviously, like, we love making music, but I think we like the live show interaction with fans and, like, the community building aspect of it. Mm -hmm. Like, we cherish our world very much so. Okay. And, like, oh, that's sweet. Being able to, like, it's crazy seeing how many people become fans and then become friends with each other. And then they mob to, like, 10 cities and they're, like, staying at each other's houses and, like, flying to each other and like they're like i met my best friend because of you guys and like i don't know that's the kind of shit that like made me love being a fan of music when i was a kid so much did you did you have a band that you like did that did you guys in general have a band that you did that for uh i was just like super down with the local scene in tucson arizona like i was in bands and like but also like just going to a lot of shows at the same venues a lot so i didn't like follow bands that much but i was going to the same venues and like always seeing like the same people go to shows and I'm like oh shit what's up like i was on the same wave like the san diego hardcore scene was definitely pretty tight-knit so it was like shea cafe and selma were kind of the, the only spots you would go hang out um does does do you all have a background in different bands that aren't pop punk uh yeah i was in like a five seconds of summer type beat before they were a thing when I was younger, like that was like that was the goal before like Five Sauce was even a thing, really. And then I like did some other like weird bands and projects 
I love that it's you were doing five good. sauce before that. It's like you were this close. I was, I was they, really, really they, pissed when they saw what deceptively innocent was the name. Yeah, let's not talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> saw wedgie and they're like, damn, we're stealing all this sauce. And so they wrote American Apparel. Well, it's, it's also not fair that they're Australian and good looking. You know what I mean? Like they have like the you're, accent. You're, you're just good looking. So, so your decks were stacked against you. I got it. Harboring yeah. a lot of resentment right now for that band. Oh yeah. yeah. The minute we meet them, it's it's scrap time. Ash, we've been training. Ash, and you're beautiful, but I hate you. Okay. <laughs> Coley, I feel like you were gonna chime in there and say that you were in bands that weren't pop punk or like related. Were you in a hardcore band? I was. I had like a somewhat hardcore band when I was like 14. It was more like scrams and kind of punky versus okay. like hardcore, I'd say. But then um, out of high school, I was in this group called Strange Faces that was more like alt kind of pillars meets the national type vibes okay all right all right i uh i was reading an interview from you guys back with uh nme um and you were talking about the importance of mosh pits is that something you kind of bring from like the scenes you grew up in absolutely (laughs) (laughs) our pits are a lot more girl pits because we got a lot of girl fans (laughs) but the girls i mean the the energy of your music is obviously a little different than the hardcore Uh, scene right oftentimes oftentimes our pits are like just the girls throwing down and the dudes are like standing off the side and the girls just (laughs) giving it all the energy so Girls do you feel like power. you have to encourage it or does it happen naturally? The pets. Yeah, it's pretty naturally. Yeah, it just depends on like the the city. Yeah. Honestly. Like, we're pretty demanding from the jump of like what we want. So if it's not happening, we usually instruct. But if it is if the assignment is understood, it'll happen naturally. We have a couple of course a couple songs that it's like built in. You know, fight mode is like that's everyone knows that when fight mode comes on, you just all hell breaks loose. And that's the that's 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 the assignment um okay so we had a uh we had a list of questions here are kind of like our get to know you section that are a little less music related and more like personal um but not serious uh scariest movie you've watched this month serious movie you watched this month scariest 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 oh he's so gassed bro that shit's fire that is None. that is the movie of the year so far. I love horror movies. I don't watch any scary movies. I fucking hate scary movies. I love scary I'm movies. Seriously. I fucking hate them. <laughs> I, I I cannot stand scary movies. I allude it to like putting viruses in your software. I don't want that <laughs> shit. You, I'm sorry, are you too scared? Like what what is the <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm a yeah. giant pussy. I can't deal with it, bro. <laughs> Honestly, I haven't I haven't watched a movie in a long time. I'm just like on my anime what? like <laughs> adventure time. Like this is more into hentai recently. Right? Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> we did. We that did. That can get pretty scary. Really to be scary fair. Fart porn video. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 was, that, was, that, porn was, that was that was pretty fucking scary. <laughs> that was that was last night. I was like, we made we made Beepus and his dad watch it together. It was yeah. pretty awesome. Yeah. So that yeah, was the, the, best the part. horror section on Pornhub goes crazy. Not, <laughs> not my favorite. <laughs> it was wild. Yeah. Insane. Uh, t- TV show from your childhood that had the greatest impact on your life. Oh, Fresh Ooh. Prince of Bel Air. Gossip Girl. Oh, honestly, Adventure Time. Interesting. That's like, or, what's interesting is that I imagine you guys are all the same age, but there's a weird, like, disparity and, like, generations there in terms of TV shows. Right. Like, straight, like, 90s. <laughs> yeah. He's right. the youngest one, too, which is the funniest part. <laughs> I just would stay up all night and watch all of the shows that Nickelodeon would play after, like, the kids' shows were off. Oh, yeah, so Nick was, at like, night. George Lopez. Fuck, what is like home improvement? The and nanny. Then, the nanny and yeah, these uh, all check out. Yeah, yeah, yeah Also a lot of MTV shit too. I think when I was a kid. I had like in my adolescent years seeing bands on MTV and like that whole world. That was pretty cool. The top one hundred countdown was like a religious thing yeah. for me for sure. I remember I definitely watched right when like YouTube was the first community thing and then Google video was a thing too before they bought YouTube. Like I would just go on there and watch like little clips from like cribs or just any music video I could find, like all the good Charlotte shit and just like any green. I was obsessed with Green Day as a kid, all that stuff. Blink, it does feel like we lost a culture a little bit when MTV essentially just killed every single video that they ever played. Yeah, it is. It is weird. It's weird nowadays with music. I think it's we live in a weird state of music consumption, you know, and it's like where songs sure. can be so big and then just go away. Where like, I feel like back in the day, even like in our... I remember when we were kids, like songs had like lives, you know, you could have a song be it. You know, songs could la- exist for years. Oh, yeah, you would like write an album and tour it for three years. Yeah, and he was like, "Cool, yeah. when's the next one coming out?" Three years from now, our album cycles are like already working on it. <laughs> you know what I mean? 
it's, <laughs> it's it's insane because we were at a show last night and like a three days gray song came out from like 2000 or came on like the overhead from like 2003 and i'm like how does this crowd know this song, right? Because they're easily like 15 years younger than the generation that like grew up listening to it. But that kind of, you kind of make a good point about how like that song just like lives on eternally. And yeah. now songs live for like two weeks. Was this was this with Loath and Chevelle? No, this no, was, uh, no. So this was, we were at a, we were at a show last night, uh, Don Broco, and it was just oh, like fine. their, uh, wait, what? They're fire. They're fire. We were just with them Incredible. the other like, Absolutely the fucking. Ago. You guys have good taste. Too. Incredible. Okay. <laughs> They're so sick. Thank you. So do you. Yeah, you guys are clearly. Appreciate, <laughs> appreciate it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it was just like, it was whatever. Like, I, I hate whatever their fucking song is. I hate my life or I hate this town or whatever. Three Days Grace sings, right? <laughs> Everything about yes, you. Thank you. you. <laughs> do I, I hate you. this town. And then like everybody's singing along and then like a Pierce the Veil song comes on and I like I hear maybe two people kind of like hum like mumbling the words and I'm like what is this weird generational like divide where people are more familiar with a Linkin Park song that came out 20 years ago than the songs that like are from the bands that they listen to it just well, blows my about, mind. Think about how we consumed it back then like if a song comes out now you consume it on TikTok whatever it's really quick and then the, the next thing pops up you're distracted we're like Back in the day, I remember to get a song. I remember like Bye. going on LimeWire and illegally downloading the song. So like when mm -hmm. I, for me to want that song, I had to like go through processes. You had to, to be get committed, it, yeah. Get it on my shit. Once I had on my iPod, I'm like, I'm rinsing this thing till it's fucking dry. You should have heard but, how much I bumped Axel F by Crazy Frog, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like straight up, like we had that shit on our iPod videos, just like blasting. You know, it's like, is you, you, you have this like, I distinctly remember having all those songs on my iPod and you just like, well, that's what you listen to. And so you have this attachment to them. I think inherently we have that attachment. I think a lot of people in like, you know, we're probably, we're on the cusp of millennials and Gen Z, but like, mm -hmm. I think there's still that attachment there. I know younger kids, like my little sister, she's 18 and it's like, she doesn't have that aspect. Her like, I ask her all the time what she listens to and she like tells me how she finds new music. It's fascinating for me to, like tap into that because she just she's never experienced cds she's is never she a fan a of beautiful CD. dropout yeah she's a fan she likes okay, she actually likes a lot of our unreleased stuff a lot more she loves like dominic fike and like a lot more pop stuff got it got and it, got it, got let it, got me tell it. you we have a lot more of that like pop shit on our unreleased like on our vault and she has access to the whole vault so she like <laughs> yeah, she's like she always like? texting me, like, when is this song coming out when is this song coming out and yeah her friends are hyped on it though she she just started college and she moved into her dorm and she had like friends in college be like i love your brother's band and they're like so it's hard. great it's so, great of her to go ahead and spread it word of mouth is that yeah, frustrating yeah, like, for you though like do you internalize that frustration that like you put all this effort into an album drop it and then immediately have to get back to work uh not really i mean I it's, it's, it's not, kind of by nature yeah it's also yeah yeah right no, because like, it's it's, it's like the that. industry i get that but but is it is it a little bit of you wishing it wasn't that way not really because i think we would even if we didn't have to get back to work we still would you know what i mean it's like also i think when we say like working on the next album is like we we're working on our fifth album right now just because we have so much music that like we have songs that we've like made years ago that we're like we're gonna bookmark this song for three albums from now because we want to tell that story later you know what i mean it's just interesting i think we're always in a constant state of like bookmarking our our content and our creations and fitting them where they need to go i didn't realize pete wentz was that hard of a boss that he has you working like years in advance of your album yeah he whips, he whips us yeah mark and pete <laughs> that's like, oh, yeah. yeah but like it's like bdsm kind of vibes not like it's like sexual yeah it's hot right, like, right, right 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 horror <laughs> section i gotcha um yeah. uh sport you think you could win if a stranger challenged you to a pickup game oh ping pong eight uh, really that was confident go oh, bart Damn. wait i got Four. ping pong and then Four. i got Four. and then i got what Four. oh days oh yeah Cole's a pool shark, pool for shark. sure, for sure. I'm a ping pong baby. I could do mountain biking. <laughs> <laughs> what are you gonna do? Race are you down racing someone? I could. I will win in a mountain bike race. <laughs> I, I feel like it is i feel like an iron man that's like one third of it it's like you run yeah, and then is. you like bike and then you crawl or yeah. something insane oh um, swimming i'll also win at swimming i'm a really fast swimmer Damn. a lot, yeah. lot of range here um yeah. <laughs> What is so that called? Triathlon or some shit? Triathlon. triathlon. So I keep, I would just challenge you to triathlon. I might fucking suck ass at the running part, but I'll beat you in the other two. That's you right. Know? You'll just make up ground. <laughs> yeah. Uh, last celebrity sighting. 
Uh, that's slow resetting. Ooh. And nobody, nobody, nobody mute. Like you can't say blink, right? Because like obviously. Yeah. <laughs> who who's the last like who like justifies it? Yeah, who's a celebrity these days? Wait, what do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean <laughs> justify as a celebrity? Who wouldn't and you who's... justify as a celebrity that came to mind? Yeah, who's on the D list right now? I don't know. I feel like well, I feel like it's like we're friends with a ton of like famous internet people that I would have like uh, yeah, I know we don't count. But then it's like, <laughs> yeah, but it's like this weird thing of like, well, what do you define? Like, I have friends that have millions of followers, but then it's like, oh, Maddie Healy. Okay, there we go, Maddie Healy. Wait, what? What was your interaction with Maddie Healy? There were, there were no down. interaction. It was oh, uh, okay. like a private. It was a private show in Hollywood that they like. I had found out. It's funny. I was at the Three Days Grace show, waiting for Three Days Grace to go on, and Stop. I left. They're on tour. Because yeah. I found out that the 1975 was playing a private show for like 300 people. And I finessed my way in. So that was the Did you dip on Three Days Grace? I did. I'm sorry. Well, I, I won't take it personally. <laughs> that's, that's a Three okay. Days Disgrace. <laughs> oh, yeah. Three Days <laughs> Disgrace. Yeah. That's good. It was right after, like, we found out that 1975 had announced they were doing, like, an indefinite hiatus after this tour. So I was like, oh, my God. When's the last time you're going to see them play in the Rocky of all places? Like, Wait, oh, how I long? feel like I missed that announcement. Yeah. How long ago was this? This was, like, the week leading up to us leaving. So, like, a week and a half ago. Yeah. Okay, so this, is this is a thing. So You're telling me the band it, announced right. recently they're going on a definite hiatus? That's what I heard too. Well, they announced it at the private show. <laughs> right, so or like before. No, no, no. Before the private show. Before. I, we're, we're just spreading fake news. Yeah. <laughs> Let me show you. I'm going to fact check them. I think, oh, we we were really close to Dave Grohl. Yes. That was a good one. This yeah. is insane. What right do you mean now? by close to Dave Grohl? Like well, physically? Yeah, like we were at, we were playing Louder Than Life and we were like, we, we snuck into like the artist viewing section, but like, you know, like headliners have like a different pass to get like. <laughs> I, I do not know, but it makes sense. <laughs> so like our artist passes don't work for headliners sets usually, but we like definitely snuck back there. We always have a finesse. And then in the middle of the set, they like took, Dave Gold comes over and opens the barricade and says, come on stage to like the 15 people that were there. And we all got to sit on the side of the stage. Yeah, that's nice. And walk. It took us like five minutes to figure out that he wasn't saying to like literally come on the stage. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he cried. He's like, don't. Security don't started dressing pick up a back mic, after. yeah. Oh, it was a frenzy. It was a mess. Yeah, you could say. <laughs> Fucking side stage for Foo Fighters is. It was so cool. Insane. I cried a little bit. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I mean, it does feel like a, a life defining moment, to be fair. It was uh, pretty cool. It was the, the funniest thing is we were like 10 minutes before that, we're like, should we leave? We're like, yeah, we might just want to dip out for traffic. And then 10 minutes <laughs> later, he's like, come on stage. We're like, oh, okay. What, <laughs> they God, what does fucking Foo Fighters close with? It, it could be anything, right? I think they closed with Everlong. Yeah, I think they did. Yeah. yeah. Checks out. Yeah, dude, they're so pimp. They did like, they don't even use in-ears. They're just like, they're, they're just like oh, a and, band. Yeah, yeah and, they're and like a band, band. When you're sitting. A lot of bands, if you're sitting side stage, it would actually probably suck because it's just your cymbals and no amps like us. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and I mean, I've done it and, and it's a cool experience, but I do know what you're saying. But like sitting and watch the Foo Fighters play side stage is sick because you just feel like you're watching them jam because you can hear their amps and their stage wedges. And it's yeah, that's fucking that's nuts. That's absolutely fucking insane. Um, though being side stage for a regular Foo Fighter show would be like they play for like three and a half hours. Like you gotta have like some stamina like for it was, that. It was a lot. They actually play for so long. They have two porta potties on each side of the stage, Shut the and fuck it's labeled up. it's labeled Poo Fighters on the porta potty, yes, and they do that. I'm assuming for the band and crew, just in case anyone needs to go take a shit or piss <laughs> halfway through the set, because they play for so fucking long. Is the dream to reach that level? I assume it is, right? I don't want to play that long. I don't think we'll ever play that long. <laughs> but it's actually funny. They're, they're, we know their tour manager, and he, <laughs> we were like, this is a short set for them. He's like, yeah, they know they play for three and a half hours. Don't ever play for three hour, three and a half hours because no one wants to listen to your fucking music that long. <laughs> Bro, I don't think I'd have the that patience for it. That would be nuts. But I love it. Like he was just like straight up. It was so funny. It, two, what they played for two hours that one? Yeah, that was perfect. That felt good. That was how long like... does the nineteen seventy five play for? Mm, I got there halfway through the set, but I think they played for like ninety minutes. Maybe okay. a little bit so, longer. So normal, so average. <laughs> our set's like anywhere for a headline is like hour to hour thirty for our shit. So I feel that's like that's regular, right? Like that's yeah. as expected. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's kind of brutal. Like we also forget that like fans have been standing all day. You know what I mean? It's like we've been we're sitting in chairs and shit, and they're like, 
they're like they're that's brutal i remember going to we're, we're sitting in chairs and shit bro like i can't i'm stuck at going to concerts i'm like yo i'm out of here like this is too much I, I feel like, like after COVID, it somehow got harder. Like, like I forgot how to do it after taking a couple of years off. So it's like sitting through five bands now is absolutely insane. Um, re real quick, did you guys try to use the Foo Fighter porta potties? No, they were behind a like barricade, an extra barricade. Yeah, and I, I thought know. about that because I had a fucking pee. <laughs> I was hiding in there in case Dave would come, you know, surprise me. But <laughs> oh, Daddy Dave, uh, yeah. Yeah, right. David, oh yeah, Mr. Grohl, welcome. What was the uh, last thing you guys bought on Amazon? Oh, I just spent like five hundred dollars on Amazon. I bought like a new sleeping bag for our thing. I bought like <laughs> bought a new suitcase. I basically did like a whole new. Wait, is this tour prep? Is that what all that shit is? Yeah, it was just like all tour prep, like <laughs> dude wipes and like. <laughs> Wait, no, go <laughs> go down the list. What do we need to go on tour? We need dude oh, wipes I and a sleeping like a portable, bag. Yeah, portable charger. Um, the last thing I bought. Oh, like this. I bought this on Amazon. What does it say? It says, your butt napkin, my lady. <laughs> and the reason I bought it is because I saw this in our first our friend's house right now. I saw it in her bathroom. I'm like, this is amazing. I'm like, my, my girlfriend would like this. And I bought it on Amazon for 10 bucks. I sent it to her house. It's like a magnetic <laughs> sign. Yeah, it's just a sign that says your butt now. Yeah, just oh, like, that's awesome. <laughs> Lady. Oh, yeah. What Wait, else? where what are else? you guys right now? Because for some reason, I thought you guys would like call in from a hotel, but there's no way you set these guitars up behind you. Oh, no, we're at my friend's house. We, okay. whenever okay. there's a friend in the city, we just like to crash with them because we also travel in an RV. Um, and so we're sleeping in there. Um, so if we can park in front of our friend's house and have a place to shower and stuff. Especially on off days, it's real nice. Yeah, that does happen. Makes sense. Sense. If, you got five hundred dollars worth of Amazon gear in the back of this RV right now? Uh, yeah, I fitted all my backpack. Honestly, it was like, <laughs> oh, we like got a lot of soylent and like I bought a bidet for my friend's birthday. Mm -hmm. That's your jagger. Nice. I got him a bidet last mm -hmm. week. It's, it's a really a good considerate deal. gift. <laughs> yeah, you can be like, your ass stinks. Yeah, bro. Pretty much. Here's a bidet. <laughs> like, it really does feel like having an unspoken sort of judgmental thing. What was that? It does feel a little bit like an unspoken. It's like giving somebody a breath mint. It's like they kind of got to question that gift for just a second. Uh, the day is much more expensive and considerate, though. Yeah. Well, our other friend got him a butt plug. So I was like, I feel like it only makes him. <laughs> Yeah, right, they, they correlate, of course. Yeah. Uh, f final get to know you question. Uh, what's the worst thing you've ever eaten? Ass. <laughs> oh, that's, that's yeah, true. So true. See, I like it, but um, that's why I got the bidet, bro. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the worst thing I've ever eaten though was I had butt, like <laughs> mid jerky from Hawaii, and it was like the most foul. I think it was the smell more so what than the actual jerky? taste. Squid. Squid jerky. Did you and it was like squid jerky? my dad brought it back from Hawaii, saying this is the worst thing I've ever had. <laughs> Here, try it. And so you know I'm down. It's like right, someone's course. like, here, smell it. It smells like shit. And you go to smell it because you have to know, you know? <laughs> right. And like, obviously, he didn't undersell it. It was fucking terrible. It was the, it was terrible. It, it still haunts me. Um, What are your thoughts on this new Blink-182 album? Have you listened to it yet? It is so dang. It. It's really good. Oh, oh Amber Alert. Did you just say... Amber? There was an Amber Alert. Uh, <laughs> and just like blew up my phone. The police are coming. They heard we killed this interview. <laughs> oh, <shit>. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Absolutely um, murdered it. Yeah, we said, uh, Blink when you Oh, yes. Honestly, the coolest part about it is like, and I heard someone else say this too, it like spans everything that all of the members have ever done. Like, I think it sounds like a little Angels in It's a little like, Plus 44, a little early blink, a little self-titled, a little like late blink. It's got some heavy shit in there too. Like the hints of like um oh god, what's the what's the one that they just did the tandem release with that was not the sad song? One more time. Oh, oh no, that was the song. Oh, was it it wasn't more than you know, time, was more it? Than you know that more than you the know the double gotcha. pedal like crazy shit that Travis is doing is just so sick. Tickles tickles that. He part produced of my brain. that whole record too, which like makes a ton of sense to me. Yeah, I'm sure that makes sense. Okay, so yeah. oh, and then Anthem Part Three as a diehard Blink fan, like stroked my brain very nicely. Yeah, that's pretty sick. Is it? 
am I crazy? Or when you're listening to that album, do they do like sonic callbacks to like other Blink songs and like riffs and stuff? Or is that me just like nostalgic oh, no, myself? No, while I'm listening? I know. Sure. Also knowing Mark, I know they do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's like I hear it, even if it's not there. It's very trippy. Glad to, uh, glad you guys uh, enjoyed it. Did you all listen to it together? No, I listened to it this morning on my phone. I'm excited to get like a. Is the full album out? Yeah, it came out today. Oh no shit! Yeah. Oh, I've only been listening to the songs that I heard like everything that they released up to. So I'll listen to the rest of it today. But Acceptable. Just... Literally dropped this morning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You guys, it's uh... so funny. I was just talking to Mark about this uh, when we were in a thrift shop yesterday that had this really, really dope old blank shirt that, that they made to like make fun of old pornos. And it's like a black <laughs> and white photo of them on a couch, like half naked. It just says sluts across it. Oh, tell no, me about so... it. You you picked it up. Oh, right? No, I didn't. I don't. I don't have that kind of vintage cash. But uh... <laughs> <laughs> wait, what are they charging for a Blink-182 shirt from 20 years ago? It was bundled with all the shirts that were also going for like anywhere from 500 to 800. It was like oh, one of those vintage oh. shops. They had like their heart shaped box to do and like shit like that. So we should give it to Mark as a gift. He was stoked. He was like, oh my God, that's my favorite shirt we ever made. We were making fun of the porn like <laughs> ads back in there. It was like classic. So cool though. I know. One time I found a, a vintage shirt at like the Melrose Fleet or Trading Post and I sent it to Mark and he's like, he's like, how much is that? Like, he was curious about how much the vintage shit is selling for. <laughs> like, I was reporting back. I'm like, fucking flip it. Of vintage bling merch. Uh, are Pete Wentz and Mark Hoppus like good bosses? Yes, they're the dopest, nicest, most caring people. It is so cool to have people. And honestly, it's because they're bassist. Bassists are the best. Um, <laughs> but they're like, Mark, we'll, we'll be like on a label meeting with Mark. And then after he'll call us separately from the whole team meeting and say, are you guys happy? And it's just right, like that. Right. So like outside of like the office meeting type B, like he needs to know personally if you guys are actually like being honest. Yeah. So yeah. do you work with Mark more directly than I would expect a band to generally work with a label owner? Like, is he more involved? Is it because it's smaller right now? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, where I mean, his technically his title is A and R, so like, okay, basically how that works. We've like written stuff with him, obviously, um, but then also, I mean, obviously now he's he touring, so it's like we don't see him as much. We saw him a lot on our tour that we were on together. He's but, very consistent with giving us notes and like honest reviews on the music that we're giving back to them. Yeah, which is okay. uh, pretty fucking dope you know it's incredibly beneficial to, too pretty easy to trust someone who's sold as many records as he has he does say that too he's like he's like i have the best opinion because i have 20 million no he, no he says he says i've been right like what 30 million times yeah, yeah. <laughs> i was literally on their spotify page today obviously it was like their first song had like 965 million streams it's just like numbers you can't even like fathom it's yeah, like half yeah. the artists i listen to have like acceptable reasonable amounts of streams and then you go on an artist like blink 182 or something and it's just like fucking mind-blowing do you guys yeah. have the same affinity for uh fallout boy that you do blink 182 oh i absolutely do i also yeah. i got to go on the fallout boy tour my girlfriend was opening and so i played bass on that tour too really wait and i'm sorry not... who's your girlfriend royal and the serpent okay all right that checks out yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah but um... that was super cool getting to open for blink with us and then fallout boy with her was just like that's like my childhood dream crushed in like one year. I'm just like the, everything I've ever wanted to do is like this. <laughs> right. So now you have to keep chasing a high that's like touring with Blink 182. The next thing is us headlining Madison Square Garden. I think besides that, I've checked every box. Uh, which would be big. Uh, Margos, that next one is all you. Have you guys actually watched Grease? Oh, yeah. So oh, much. Yeah. So many times. <laughs> like favorite movie when I was a kid. I used to get on my like little buggy when i was like a little kid and sing go grease lightning and like whirl my shirt around my dad can contest to this uh grease too uh no i was big of a fan i refused to <laughs> and they did like a revamp too like they tried to like they do did like something yeah i think it was like a straight to tv type thing oh, i don't know it just wasn't keep it keep it do what it is oh i'm a grease purist <laughs> 
favorite TV like show, Adventure Time. Counter. Favorite movie, Grace, is like, uh, like you really rolled the dice on a personality. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> fucking weird. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Like, I didn't mean it as a negative. I bet it's a <laughs> random type. I could never guess. <laughs> I got more more question marks around my personality. I'm sure. <laughs> are uh, Are you gonna let Branson from Not a Toy tattoo you on this tour? Is that who's tattooing you soon? That is literally what's about to happen. Let's go. Okay. We put the stencils on, and then we're like, "Oh shit, we have an interview." We have fuck <laughs> interview. Are Are all you gonna get tatted this tour? Or what? Oh yeah, yeah. I'm about to do my stomach after I'm, he does this. I'm gonna try to get Branson to give me a penis tattoo. Nice. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not even. I feel kidding. like it's not, not gonna take a lot of convincing. Tattoo. Is that not his specialty? Is that why it's hard to get him to do it? Uh, he's never done one before, but he said he wanted to test it out yeah. on Pardo. Okay, fair. <laughs> I feel like it'd be a cool tattoo. He's gonna he's gonna write locals only up the bottom of his shaft. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh, no. Will you do the uh? Will you do the interview? Fuck yeah. The painful interview. That's an actual yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, uh, which is just sick. Why not? Such a fucking Wait, wait so uh, what are your knuckles going to say? Hard luck. Because I'm edgy. I like it. <laughs> I don't know. I've wanted it since I was 18. I don't know. I just like, I like the idea of like, it's a it's a four letter way of saying bad luck. So it fits on my knuckles. <laughs> fair, fair. Wait, so why did it take you so long? Uh, I didn't want to do it until I had enough tattoos that I am a, like, very particular, like, I didn't have a neck tattoo until I had my arms and my torso tattooed. I like, feel you. Right, so once you run of out of, like, the logical spaces, you move on? Yeah, I just, I think that there's, like, a order that people should get tattooed, and if you have a face tattoo and your hands tattooed before you have any other tattoos, I, like, don't love the way that it looks. That's me saying Under- next. Understandable. Next. Do you guys have a favorite tattoo? Oh yeah, you want you want to go first? Your favorite tattoo? Probably my, probably my snakes on my chest, but they've got these done. There's like a big right. sacred heart. Shout it's out Skindling. He's hard. the shit. Bro. Wait, this one's worth this getting is close for. Right, I'm coming down. It's a hot stuff devil with a scream <laughs> mask and a diaper riding a knife through boogers. <laughs> Was this like a fever dream you had, or? Uh. <laughs> Kind of. <laughs> there it is. I like him. I kind of like this one. Your cowboy. My cowboy. I told I told my manager I got it for him. It's a cowboy with arrows stuck in him, and he's just kind of just chilling. Because our manager is a real life cowboy. But this one's pretty okay. cool. <laughs> From Skinville as well. It's a chess piece. It's a rook, but it's also a unicorn. <laughs> how, how much thought have you given into where the penis is going to go? No, no. The pe- it's on my penis. <laughs> oh, shut, shut the fuck. So I wasn't paying attention. You're getting a tattoo... And he's never tattooed a penis. He's Wait, so what are you getting my... then? I don't know. Locals we'll only on this side. We'll figure that out in the moment. <laughs> all right. But all right. I finally put I all the pieces want to together. Get a tattoo. I was talking to this guy in in Cleveland. When I was getting I was the stuff on my chest, and I'm and I was I'm like, have you ever tattooed a penis before? And he's like, actually, yeah. And I'm like, perfect. Let's. That that would be a fun one to do. I just want to get a dick tattoo. It, cool. So wait, you're not like stressing at all? No. Really? I think you should get BSD when it's soft and when it's full. Leah, uh, why would you like it why, says beauty school dropout? Think about it. Like it's, it's not like everyone's movie, looking yeah. like it's, you could just get something small and be like, yeah. But it's like a great I have a dick tattoo. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's pretty sick. You, you know? could get a matching hard luck tattoo. Oh, I'm that's yeah. what I'm gonna do. Hard luck. I'm just gonna get luck because it's always hard. <laughs> right, or it says soft luck, but then when it gets hard, it says hard luck. Where, where yeah. Would uh, he's, gonna, you, uh, he's gonna get a little arrow right on his tummy that says "must be this tall to ride." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, those are still in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you toured with Jaden Hostler earlier this year. Honest thoughts: How are we feeling about the the switch to the government name? <laughs> the government. The government. <laughs> Honestly, I I think we're also because he's so happy about it. Like, why is he, he like, so happy about it? Did he establish why it was necessary for him to change it? I think he's been going through a lot of change in his personal life and Got it. struggling with his own identity and feeling like he had to be this thing that people wanted him to be. And um, I think this was kind of his way of saying, I like, he's literally Jaden Hostler. That's what it says on his ID, you know? And it's just like, that's who he wants to be. He doesn't want to do the whole JXDN, like trying to be this thing, you know, it's just like, 
It's just him. That's who he is. You know? He's growing up. Uh-huh. Dude, and like having so much eyes on him at such a young age. Uh, yeah, I think it, this is like his next phase. It's hard. He, you know, he popped off on TikTok when he was like 15, 16, whatever. Yeah. And he's, you know, it's a lot of eyes on you. He didn't start making like rock music. Also, the interesting thing with Jaden is like he didn't, he'll tell you this too. Like he didn't grow up listening to pop punk at all. He grew up listening to Justin Bieber. You know, and like Justin Bieber is his favorite artist. What's interesting and... is that you do pull a little bit that he he has certainly similar to you guys a lot more range outside of pop punk, even though yeah. that's the style he kind of got lumped into. And I think that's why it bangs. And Travis, even that's why Travis fucked with it when he found Jaden because he's like, perfect, I can mold you into like Jaden wanted to rock, and he's like, cool, I can I can show you shit. Like Jaden came over to the one day and he's like, bro, I just found the killers. I'm like, what? <laughs> I just like, I mean, you killers. just you literally just found out about the killers and like he's obsessive so he like he he yeah out i was lost to yeah. experience that i would love to discover right? a band like that no, straight like... up that's why i was like bro i'm like jealous of you right now how imagine just discovering the killers right now Dude, what a like, discography to right. go through. It's like i just like, heard about my chemical romance they're crazy yeah it's like... <laughs> but it's, but, it, but he's so like genuine about it and comes across it and he's like wants to emulate it and it reminds me when i was a kid like why i was obsessed with music is because i would listen to a band and i don't give a fuck what the genre was but I was like, I want to figure out how to make music exactly like it. And that's how I learned to produce. I would just copy and steal shit from people. And it's just like, that's how you do it. That's how you learn. You, I, go, I dissect a song until I made a song exactly like that song. You know? Do you guys produce a lot of your own stuff? We, all of it. All of it. Yeah. All of it. And, for, really? and for other people. Unless we, we uh, co-produce with some producers on our stuff. But the last project uh, was all us except for... Uh, Andrew Goldstein produced uh, Beautiful Waste. And then we also have collaborations with like Drew DeCaro and like a bunch of other cool people. Yeah. Well, it produces but, not. So it somehow makes a good album even a little better. That's crazy. Yeah. we. I mean, we definitely love collaborating with people, but like it doesn't, no matter what, we have to touch it. Who even if someone that? else is a part of it, like we have to touch it. It's very rare that it's actually, I don't think we've ever not touched something. Yeah. We always I, take I love stem. that mindset though. Yeah. yeah. That's understandable. Who have you produced? Uh, artists outside of yourselves. I've produced some stuff for Jaden, um, Death by Romy, Lauren Gray. Uh, did whole yeah, yeah, did Lauren Gray's whole album. Trevor Daniel. Trevor Daniel, Royal yes. the Serpent. Uh, who else? I'm blanking. I don't know. Fucking, they're Pretty just talking about Spotify lists, yeah. and shit and stuff. And there's more. There's more stuff. There's more stuff in the fucking in the vault that's not out yet, but it's coming. Um, Bardo, I was scrolling through your Twitter and I got the impression you hate pop punk or hated it at one point this year. I do. I hate pop punk. <laughs> Why? Speak to me a little bit about that. I'm just kidding. No, I, I just think I just. <laughs> I yeah, but a, it, I, it felt like you were having a reaction to something <laughs> and needed to get it off your chest. No, I think it was just like I struggle with shit that like gets boring and I like mm. things that feel new and like. It just like I think recently pop punk has felt really tropey and just kind of like annoying to me, and I just like oh if we're talking like that I agree the 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 second coming of pop punk was kind of either super sick or super missed, and yeah. and it also felt people... like it happened very quickly right like it, we peaked super fast and then it just started to like go down. It just felt like everyone was trying to be Blink like. Yeah. Like everyone, it like not there was no difference. I couldn't tell the difference between songs between people. And I don't know, like it kind. Of, I think pop punk went through that phase again before it died. Back in the day, like it got like super tropey and then died. And I feel like it happened in a matter of six months. This most recent like chunk of it, it like everyone was tropey as fuck. And then that's like the ultimate gone. sign, right? Yeah, it yeah. definitely is. I think we um, we just like shit that is like pushes the envelope. I think that's something we always try to do is like ask ourselves, are we copying or like, are we like just doing something that's already been heard or are we doing something different? You know, and like, how can we be different? And I think sometimes we nail it, sometimes we fuck it up, but I think we're constantly striving to be different and kick everybody in the nuts. How do you do that when you're planning five albums out? Like, like, how do you know the material that you wrote for the album that you would like to drop next is going to be relevant to the time that you drop it? Do you find yourselves like, scrapping and rearranging a lot of stuff even though you Sometimes, thought at yeah, the time we've, we've literally brought songs that we wrote three years ago and brought them up again and like change everything and we like re- reproduce it and then 
I mean, some of the biggest songs that even like Lean On, for example, like that massive, you know, major laser hit, like that was a song written three years before it came out, had a different vibe. The state of music was changing. So they reproduced it like four different times to and they put DJ Snake on it, put it out number one song like that's just how i think the antidote to this is a good song is a good song yeah a good song is always gonna live so you're saying yeah. like the bones are there but like bones every artist is like tweaking till the last second we treat yeah. songs as like the most important thing like even like our song assassin we wrote that our, that song the reference for that song was ghost by justin bieber we were like <laughs> let's write a song that sat when we played it on acoustic guitar we wrote it on acoustic guitar we want it to sound like ghost by justin bieber because that song sounds like an amazing song. You play that to a girl, she'd be like, wow, that's a beautiful song. And we're only in this to get girls. So obviously, so, um, you know. <laughs> Do you want, does a lot of your um, influence come from pop artists or is it a broader range than that? Oh, every, uh, everything. I think everything? Also, okay, okay. The, everything. the benefit we have is to, like, all three of us have our hands so deep in the writing process and our just whole world that, like, there's so much influence coming from each three, the three of us that it's so different to yeah. all the times. So like we have very drastically different music tastes, but also it crosses a lot too. Yeah. It really is an equal process. And it like, I think that is our superpower that like I grew up listening to drastically different music than the boys. And it, like, we all have different favorite bands, but we, it comes and meets in the middle. Uh Just with favorite bands, is that like, does it, does it change frequently or of all of you? kind of kept the same ones for a long time um uh, mine's ever changing mine's ever changing i have my staples like my top five like favorite bands of all time yeah that like what's more I've interesting never... getting getting a right now or getting an all time what's i want to know right now actually yeah. i'll give you my top three of all time <laughs> <laughs> just kidding right now all right um, all right man. Never top, mind. Never mind. Top, you yeah, dictate. Top, three of, top three right now uh you tell me the next question <laughs> yeah yeah Wait, you, said, you said right now Yes, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I want I want all time and right now from you specifically. Okay. Yeah. All time? <laughs> sorry, I'm so dumb. I'm so sorry. Uh <laughs> right now I would say my top three favorite are this kid Knox. He he is so fucking okay. cool. Yes, discovered him like four weeks ago, heard a song and I thought it was incredible. Dude, I think he's just is it makes me happy to listen to his music. Um Bring Me and Turnstile. Okay. And then all time blink, nineteen seventy five neighborhood. Are the, there we go. Yeah, okay. I I can see that. I can see some of that influence in the music too. Um, as far as like obviously blink, bring me. Do you just sit side stage and watch those bands perform every night when you're on tour together? Turnstile. Yeah. yeah, we watch like every show. Yeah, yeah. It was it was rare for us to not. Turnstile is one of our favorite bands right now for sure. They are a great example of doing something just interesting and in pushing the envelope, you know, and we really look up to them aesthetically too. I think a big part of our music too, is we always try to picture how it can look aesthetically and like how it feels. Um, yeah. Uh, aesthetically, kind of like your picture. videos are like very powerful. Um, beautiful waste of time in particular, the scene where we go underwater and then we're reborn or we die. And presumably we go to like goth girl heaven is just such a fucking trip. And then like comparing that to something to like assassin, it's just like, there's like a huge dichotomy and like styles between those two. Yeah, where do I you do. pull influence when you're talking about visuals as opposed to music? Tumblr being a Tumblr kid from 2014. <laughs> still like still now. Dead ass. Okay. So, I mean, it's not really. I'm just more. So, yeah, Pinterest more so. I mean, like, I have I have my bag of tricks of like people that I look to for visual inspo. I spent a lot of time on Tumblr as a kid, so I kind of and I grew up in photography and production, so like the visual shit is kind of really easy to pull from just from so much experience like on set and seeing what other directors and producers do. That is kind of Coley's role in the world of BSD. Like he is like our visual man's and then Barra's producer. And then I'm like designer. He, so, so then, so, so obviously I'm, I'm the producer thing we talked about, but Coley, did you d direct any videos by BSD? I technically co-direct like all of them. I mean, okay. I usually am the one who makes them everything from like mood board to the producing treatment. the actual video itself and the treatment and then execution putting the team together 
Okay, so so hands obviously very deeply involved. And then Beepus, are you designing the logos and like the artwork or anything for the? Yeah, I do all the merch and like the posters and the tour flyers and all that shit. You guys are such a dream for any label that's like so obviously they sign you <laughs> and it's like that's what we think too. Yeah, we think too. <laughs> That's right. We, These are we, raises, of course. Thank you for validating that. We <laughs> pitch that. We're like, if we ever have Mark on, I'll we're, we're, we're like, we're like, wait till you guys sign another band, and you're gonna be for a wild ride. <laughs> wait, are you guys the only side, like, only band side of uh, There's one right? other band. I don't know if it's. I don't. I don't know if we can say. I don't yet. know if it's announced that. Oh, another. okay, okay, all right. So you were the first, and like, as of right now, the only. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. That's fucking crazy. Was Which, the last album released on that that label too? Yeah. Got yeah. I was cool uh, with a guinea pig. <laughs> <laughs> well, it worked out pretty well for that. Right, yeah. yeah. What three things does a or what three things does a song need to be a beauty school dropout song? Mm. Banger, banger hook. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, that one's a given. That's right. Um. Just something oh. we like songs that we always think about. How does this translate live? Yes. Okay. We think about that often. And mm. what's our third? Some sort of sad ass lyrics. I don't know. I feel like yeah, oh, lyrics are pretty sad. Yeah, lyrics that like, whoa, that's a cool lyric. Are we Real- is lyric writing something you do as a group, or or is that something Coley that you would? I think it's mostly Cole. I think Beep and I come on. We're like Grammarly. We're like the, the yeah. we're like the revision team. We, we I was gonna say. So we, where I was going with this is that like is Tumblr inspiring our lyricism as well? I think subconsciously, yeah. Uh, also, I just grew up loving poetry and like i would literally go to like slam poetry events and like spoken word shit and then just came from a scene where what you were saying was the most important part of the music so uh i kind of try and hold that standard for myself as well okay okay Uh, i mean a great example that's the the closing track on this new album right yeah poetry (laughs) that was was actually a freestyle thing is never (laughs) yourself seriously Oh yeah, everything has to be a fucking joke. So freestyle, like first take, or like we're talking the twentieth freestyle. Basically like three. Basically, the we had all the songs on the album written on a whiteboard next to it, next to the thing, and and Jagger, it's our friend Jagger, and he comes over, and he's like, "Give me the mic, give me the mic." I'm like, "Okay, <laughs> give him the mic," because I was like, I showed him this outro that I was making for the album, and he's like, and he just started like saying this shit. And he's like made this poem and like after you kind of freestyled it, I'm like, that's actually kind of funny. Like, you want to do it again? And he like just did it a couple more times and then we ended up just picking one of the takes. But like the concept, he just kind of shout out. That's insane. That's insane. Because that was one of my questions was like how how well considered the concept was or if it just worked itself out in a way that the closer came naturally. Oh, You're saying Jagger. it just sort of that, came naturally? That's Jagger Bonham. That is Jagger Bonham. He just fucking spits this stuff out and just... <laughs> he's a really good freestyler. He just... He actually is a... You put on any beat and he just... I mean, it's, it's kind of brilliant to be... Fit. Like, he's kind of brilliant. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's, it's genius. He's like, he's genius. The He actually came up with this old... Con- the other concept for what we we're going to do for the cover art was going to be... He's, he's like, you guys should make the, the album cover a a box of chocolates right a white like tablecloth with a white box of chocolates like a you know valentine's day box of chocolates yeah, and yeah, a white yeah. looks really pretty whatever and you flip the vinyl over and on the back of it it's an opened box of chocolates that's all been eaten with a post note that says go fuck yourself I fucking love that <laughs> i think that we should still do that as the delight. i think we should still do it it was such a good idea so so that moment happens like right in the studio uh as this album is sort of coming alive you meant it. You mentioned a lot of vaulted stuff. What's the oldest piece of music on this record? Uh, oldest song. I think actually everything on here is pretty really new. New Scarlet Letters. Scarlet Letters. Oh, old. Yeah. Yeah. Scarlet Letters. Scarlet Letter was. I think we made that before our last one came out, right? Yeah, it was in the running for we made plans and we didn't end up putting it on. Yeah. Is it, and that's just like a like a flow issue. Like it just didn't feel like it fit in with the rest of the tracks or something like that. Yeah, we kind of like we American Idol all our songs for, for like <laughs> we kind of just sit down like what do we want to do for this and like what story do we want to tell? How do we want to be perceived in this album? Like that kind of stuff. Uh, it's yeah. crazy to me that the end of this album came to like the closing track came together at the last minute. Uh, when you're telling me how well thought out these are as well. So like, obviously you're open to changing things at the last minute, like whatever happens in the magic of the studio. 
Oh, yeah. we turn things in for final, like we're like this is turned in, and then we're like actually, label <laughs> um pause. We are going to Psych, take yeah. it back out, change it, and then send it back to mix and match. Yeah. Oh fuck. Oh, we're very that's particular. Very <laughs> that's uh, the fun of it. I mean, uh, it does sound like you guys actually do have a lot of fun making your album. So, um. And then going back to videos, I did have another question about the beautiful waste of time. Obviously, goth girls are in heaven, but ideally, what else would you see there? In heaven? Chipotle. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Fuck so sushi. You ride that hard for Chipotle, really? Oh, oh yeah. Dude, you should Chipotle. see how much Chipotle we eat. They, sh- they owe us money <laughs> at this point. Yeah. Our fans know that we love Chipotle. They bring us Chipotle gift cards. We'd see pret en manger in heaven. Oh, yeah. Definitely pret en manger. Lots of oat milk. Uh, definitely a food-based heaven. Yeah, that's so uh, no squid jerk. What about Jerry's what? Marketing. Sandwiches? I like, say- I like sandwiches. I love sandwiches. I yeah. No, no, what the wait? No, what is pret a manger? Oh, pret a manger. This is ready to eat. Oh, <laughs> it, okay. Oh. I, sw- I it, swear to God, it's like the name of a restaurant too. I was like, it, which it, would it, make it, sense, it, it, right? In the UK, <laughs> how we got the name for the album. In the UK, yeah. they have a coffee shop that is a. Ch- Full on chain. Imagine Starbucks. Right. So I'm not out of my fucking mind, right? Yeah, okay. mind. <laughs> but it's only, it's like most, there's like three in the United States, but there's like three billion in in England. Yeah. Right. And, and it's I'm like assuming the three here England. is like California and then two in New York or something. There's one in the LAX airport. There's, okay. I think, New one York in New York D. and D. Washington, D.C. There's like literally three. And then tons in there. Every street corner, every city block has at least two. You think there's a lot of Starbucks in the U.S.? You have read no, a is literally, and you can throw a rock in any they're direction. Low, Are oh, they good? Just, Did you eat there? Like, is it good? Amazing. Oh, is five it, times a day because you get a subscription for 30 bucks a month, 30 <laughs> pounds a month, and you can get five drinks a day for free. Yeah, and they're amazing. Girl, man. Their whole stuff is, is like ready to eat, like to-go food that's really high quality compared to like, if you ask someone in England, they're like, this is trash. But you ask an American who's used to American food standards, you're like, this is amazing. It's so <laughs> good. And like, dude, we were obsessed with this. And it was amazing for touring over there. It was so simple. And we literally were, we just, we love this place. And we we're like, fuck, we're going to name our album. We're going to name it Ready to Eat. Which okay, is so Coley, you weren't fucking around. That was actually the the impetus for the name of the album? It's yeah, right, yeah. Almanger. We were literally at one in the morning. We were doing a photo shoot. And in four hours, we had a flight to fly back to the United States. Our label's like, what is your name of your album? And we looked across the room and saw a Pret Cup. And we're like, Pret on Manger. It's ready, ready to eat. <laughs> is working title and for album three, Chipotle? Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's each of our orders in a list. Yeah. <laughs> that the, but then, the, you know, I think actually what the funny thing is, we like to name shit and then come up. There's, I mean, that's the beautiful thing about Pret. Even the fact down to like, their logo is a star. And during that time, our thing that we were using for everything even the before art. we saw it like it's just like little th- like things like that that just fit together and like the metaphor for the album name realistically is we've been grinding at this shit for a long time and we are ready to eat and we're ready for the next step and i think this album for us was like hey let's this is a step into that direction we're ready to have a seat at the table and let's go so <laughs> it's, it's actually kind of fucking beautiful <laughs> thank you thank you yeah, the way it's the stars align on that <laughs> uh Boys, you've been absolutely great. It's been a lot of fun talking to you today. Thank you. Yeah, thank you guys. yeah seriously. Cool. We, we fucked with y'all very heavily. Yeah, it was really, like really lies, beautiful. Man, like so lies. It was really amazing to hear what you guys said today. And we like all really took it to heart. So we really appreciate that. Yeah, no, definitely. Like, like straight from the heart, honestly. Like, that's just the way we consume music. Like, it's extremely emotional for us, right? Like, however we feel about it is just what we're going to say. So like, honest to God, absolutely love that album. Can't thank stop thinking about it. Thinking. It was so good. Um. So again, you guys are on tour right now uh, with support from Not A Toy and Ava Maybe. That goes till December 9th. And Ready to Eat, uh, Pret a Manger in the UK is <laughs> streaming everywhere right now. Oh, uh, yeah. I released the British version called Pret a Manger. <laughs> <laughs> Even though that's Right, fun. it's the international. That's, <laughs> that's a deluxe right. version. Um, <laughs> call the UK headliner that. <laughs> yeah. So we, funny. we should call the, the, the Pret a Manger <laughs> tour. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. We do meetups at Credit Manger. We get sued. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> honestly, it's possible. <laughs> oh my god. Well, yeah. Thank you guys for having us. We appreciate it. Stoked to hang out. Thanks, guys. Yeah, we'll see you guys very soon.